And when I speak, and when I speak, when the Lord leads me to go and say, do this and do that, I remember just a few days, I spoke to somebody who was in a very difficult situation. I said, and they were saying, I don't know what to do. I said, you don't worry. The moment you get there, God will give you the word and you will know exactly what to do and what to say. And that they came back. I did not pray. I just made that declaration. When they got into the place, that's exactly what happened. And they were saying, thank you for praying for me. And I was thinking, I didn't actually pray, but because I was aligned up with the word. So the word that came out of my mouth, it was a word that was full of life, that was transforming the person so that they become what Christ and what God wanted them to be in that particular situation. So we really need to meditate on the word and we see ourselves, am I in a, aligned with this word? Have I become one with this word? Only then can Christ be manifest in us and through us. And only then can we be able to, re to bring a reconstruction, particularly to the saints, to the church, because he is going to work through the church. And as we, because we are the prototype, we, as we begin to do that, to walk in that glory, to walk in that power, in that resurrection power, the other brethren will begin to say, okay, I'm getting what you are saying because I see it in you. You are, you are manifesting it. And when we get into the place in the government, say, for the, in the business sector, and we begin just to speak the word and the things change, the church, the government, the business sector, and any other sector that will be brought in will be able to pay attention because then the Son of God will be manifest. We'll be bringing in the solutions that they don't have, and it will be happening quickly. And we'll be able to handle the billions that are coming. So let's allow the word to be to become light, to become living in us and through us. And that takes place through our own going on and meditating on the word. I think I once said they could say, for me, I really listen to the word over and over and over until it, I, it, it's, I'm full of that word. And I, I make the statements from that word, say, I am this, I am a perfect man. And I listen to myself to say, am I aligned with this word? Is there a part of me that is saying, no, you are not. And if there's that part, I go back to the word, I meditate on it, I proclaim it over myself until I become one with that word, I become the living expression of that word. So I just wanted to encourage us ourselves this morning to say, it's not just listening to the word. He has been taking us from one level to another, one level to another. But it is important for us if we need, if need be, let's go back to the, that word and review and say, okay, am I, am I one with this word that was released? on the first day, am I the one with this word? Am I one with this word or there's a misalignment? Because the idea is that we become one with that word. Thank you. I just wanted to encourage us to say, look, God is looking at us to say, you are the prototypes. You are the ones I want to, 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 to demonstrate. You are the ones that, you become visible to the world that the brethren who are not yet, who are still under the, the, the flesh anointing, who are still who are still carnal, they can see in us and through us. And they can, because it's what what, what Christ was on earth, when he was moving on earth, if he was attracting to the kingdom of darkness, oh. They would do scream, they would jump, they would do everything. There was discomfort. But to the rest of the world, he was attractive. The light is attractive. And that's what Jesus wants. He wants to be free in us and through us so that he can manifest himself. And we have to be in agreement with the way. We have to be perfectly aligned up. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me hand over to, to Apostle. Thank you. Over to you, Apostle.
thank you uh, exceedingly this morning uh, as we proceed. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor, Pastor Nyan, for the exhortation and for them. Uh, we are starting from where we left. Um, there's something that God is doing um, in our lives. Obadiah, uh, it has got only one chapter, so we are zeroing in on verse 17 and verse 21, and then we proceed to Jeremiah 29, where there is a reinforcement that we must enter into. Uh, Obadiah, the 17th verse says, but on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and they shall be holy, shall possess and says, then saviors or deliverers shall come, shall come up on Mount Zion. I like uh, the way that it is put across more, especially in the King James Version, just very direct. Uh, what you find is most of the Bibles and Bible versions, when they were uh, translating, further translating things from the um, King James Version, because King James Version was the translation from the original tongues and languages. So when there was further translations also from King James Version to other versions, there are times when um, the translators themselves, they couldn't believe uh, some of the stuff that was being said, um, not just in the original languages, but also in the King James Version, because some of the things were very tough. Some of the things that uh, were being seen, written in the Bible, some of these things were, uh, they were, they were uh, a direct literal translation from the original languages. So uh, some of the statements were too bold and some of the statements were too tough. And then the translators themselves, they were in a state of mind and they were in a state of mentality, which couldn't accept uh, the possibilities of the tough language that was being spoken, the possibilities of it being real, the possibilities of it being um, part and parcel of what humanity can become. So the translation, for example, when it comes to Obadiah uh, in verse 21, where it says, um, um, originally it says, and saviors, and the saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. It doesn't say they shall come from somewhere uh, coming to Mount Zion. It says they shall come up on Mount Zion, uh, which means they shall emerge, they shall manifest, that is the more, more, more literal and direct meaning. They shall manifest on Mount Zion. They shall emerge on Mount Zion. These are these are these are saviors. These are deliverers. Um, that you know, the the, the Bible says in uh, the Psalm eighty-seven to say, when it comes to Mount Zion, it shall be spoken and it shall be known that this one and that one were born there because uh, in Mount Zion, there is a DNA and a quality of people. So Mount Zion uh, shall manifest deliverers. It shall manifest uh, saviors. Um, yes, we know Christ, uh, the savior. So, but that Christ, the savior, when he now uh, is he, uh, uh, in Mount Zion, when he is the ultimate temple in Mount Zion, 
when he is the ultimate tabernacle in Mount Zion, uh, the savior himself shall be um, corporately extended uh, into the wider body and his body shall be an extension of the savior. So saviors, deliverers uh, shall then uh, manifest, they shall then emerge uh, out of uh, these people that were formerly maybe captured and formerly uh, without God, without covenants, and uh, they were cut off and they were strangers uh, from the commonwealth and the covenants and the promises. Suddenly these people, um, they have now emerged, they have now uh, manifested they have now gone into um, a mutation. They have now um, come out of, of what you saw them and where you saw them uh, at last time. They have now emerged. Uh, they've become like Samson now who once upon a time you found him captured, we found him uh, seduced and deceived uh, and therefore captured and arrested. But uh, next time you meet Samson again, his hair, his locks, his DNA, his Nazarite, uh, you know, uh, blueprint uh, has uh, re-emerged and uh, it has uh, manifested again the same Samson he is now holding the pillars, the, the pillars and uh, the posts of, of, uh, um, of idolatry uh, of these uh, Philistines and he can bring this whole thing down. And in one day, his victory will be greater than the work of his past 40 years, if you like, uh, because the saviors, uh, the savior DNA, the, the savior um, uh, has emerged back out of Samson and uh, the manifestation of the savior is now visible uh, in Samson. So this gives you and me incredible hope um, when I look at uh, what uh, throw uh, yourself in. Uh, you, you, may, you may find you, um, and whichever region of the world you find yourself in, um, you might find yourself in the Jeremiah 29 uh, situation whereby uh, as per the reading uh, that you, we, we are told in, in, uh, in Jeremiah 29, this was a time of uh, um, a very, very uh, serious, turbulent times whereby an entire nation, an entire kingdom of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, they have been captured, they have been exiled, they, they have been deported, um, they have been uh, 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 relocated into what one can call strange territory. Um, the other uh, by the rivers of by the rivers of Babylon and the high because it was just and then in the midst of that uh, deliverers deliverers uh, are going to image, we are going to show 
us uh, this morning uh, in the uh, the year whereby things came under lockdown and came under siege and the harps stopped uh, playing and the vocalists stopped being heard and we started having masks on the mouths and the faces uh, and uh, we started to be separated one from another uh, and uh, the culture became uh, uh, what became a new normal became uh, quite strange and, uh, and abnormal uh, now there is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing completely new under the sun. What is uh, has already been. And so Jeremiah 29 is speaking to these people. And uh, these people are now in a, a, a strange uh, The Chaldeans, they are being told to say, ladies and gentlemen, this is normal. You are now a slave. You are now captured. This is your new normal. You, you better learn a reward. You better learn to support by any Babylonian. You must, you must salute and you must say, boss, regardless of who this Babylonian is and this Chaldean is, you are now uh, by 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 uh, by by systems. You are now systemically as well as systematically, uh, you know, slaves. Um, yeah. So this is uh, something, gentlemen and ladies, that needs to be understood even by our 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 our, our people, uh, people of color. You know, uh, because we we have come from the the the, the background whereby. The whole expanse of, uh, 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 you know, people, you know, people uh, of Africa, they, you know, grew up in in some kind of what became a new normal. Uh, it's whereby the moment you just see, a more particularly, a Caucasian person or a white person, it it was just, I mean, you don't you don't have to check whether this, you know, boy or you know. It, this white boy, this white girl, this white person has got uh, an ID card, or uh, did they pass at school? Um, are they, you know, what are their credentials? Just a mere presence and a manifestation of a certain color uh, depicted and demanded, as well as commanded uh, submission and commanded uh, uh, service and slavery. Um, and enslavement, and people had to uh, accept that as a new normal. Now, I want you to understand, Jesus says, uh, frequently says, uh, I want you to know that, you know, in the beginning and from the beginning, it was not so. Uh, so there are things that just came into our being and came into our socialization. Um, but in the beginning, it was not so. Um, if I can go back to the beginning, you find that um, the first of the cities to be ever built, uh, the first of the cities, uh, regardless of how it was built, but the, it was the first of the cities ever recorded in the Bible that was built, which was actually Babel. And that city, uh, the, the 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 pathfinder and 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 the architect and and the ringleader of that construction project was actually uh, uh, Nimrod and uh, being a descendant of of one of the sons of Noah uh, who was Ham who um, in the in the in the Bible uh, Psalms 105 uh, as recently as uh, during the time of the uh, of the Exodus. Uh, Egypt uh, and Africa, you know, uh, if you want today's interpretation, Egypt and Africa, they are referred to as the land of Ham, the land of Ham. So, I mean, a, a, a son of Ham, a son of uh, present day Africa was the first builder of the first city, the first builder of the 
or, or of citywide technologies. And if you actually go back into history, um, history, some of the history that has been deleted and removed, you then find that the city, the original city of London, for London to be a city and for it to be no longer a place of barbarians, it was a king, uh, a king from West Africa, from Mali, who, who you know, who arrived in that place and found unlearned barbarians occupying that place, and uh, and uh, spoke to a, 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 a less wiser king who was there, and then gave him the design of a city, and uh, London was designed, you know, designed, uh, you know, from Africa, and and then. Um, let alone also the, the material and the mineral resources, industrialization into it then was also put there by Africa. Now, this just tells you, these are so many examples, um, present, uh, uh, past and uh, immediate past and ancient past examples of uh, you know, evidence that in the beginning, it was not so, it was not so. Um, in the beginning, it was not so. My own, my own, own forefathers, they were industrialists, they were producers, they were miners, they were refiners, they were international traders. Uh, so this is why the history of the great Zimbabwe ruins uh, in the country of Zimbabwe, uh, it has been mind boggling. It has been a center of controversy uh, for years because those that wanted to change history and to uh, make you know certain things that God made it so easy to do, things that God popularized, things that God even democratized long ago, things of manufacturing, processing, industrialization. This thing did not have to come originally from some uh, faraway you know places. Uh, in the beginning, it was not so. The Chinese were coming uh, to that ancient place to trade in not just raw materials, not just copper, not just gold, not just manganese and tin and iron, but they were coming to trade in um, equipment and tools and implements and uh, machinery and infrastructure, and they were, they were trading and people were trading with India uh, long, long, long ago. And I mean, I'm telling you in the beginning, it was not so. In the beginning, there was no, there, there was nobody homeless, literally in Africa, there was nobody homeless. There was nobody jobless, um, nobody, nobody. Um, because every, every, every parent uh, inherited skills from their own parents and they imparted skills and, and the trading uh, abilities to their descendants. And so there was no uh, uh, unemployment and there was no uh, uh, you know, uh, lack of skills because people were living you know, in kingdom based. And you know, it doesn't matter that in some cases it was not necessarily a kingdom of God, but they were, they were still living ki as kingdoms and, uh, and they had to be self-sufficient this thing of dependency, you know, you, you can't survive unless, unless they elect a good guy in France and you can't survive unless they elect a good, a good guy somewhere in Germany. This, in the beginning, it was not so. People were international traders and people were international. Africa was global. Africa was never a, a, a hopeless, inward looking, suffocated and suffocating and fainting place. No, it was never like that in the beginning. It was not so. It was not so. This is why mathematics and architecture and technical drawings and technology these things are well known to have been bequeathed and bestowed uh, to the world from along the civilizations, along the Nile and uh, uh, early Nubian and, and, uh, and the Egyptian civilization. So in the, in the beginning, it was really, it was really not so algebra and, uh, and algori you know, algorithms. These things were already there, instruments of measurements of levels and altitudes and depth and time. All these instruments were operational right there, people coming to learn. 
uh, you see, the upper, upper Egypt, the, the, the city that became known as Alexandria, which became the headquarters of Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, who was a Greek, ruled the whole empire, but the location, the capital that he ruled the whole world from was from Africa. Alexander the Great conquering the whole world from Alexandria. Africa's expanse was massive. It was expanding into present day Saudi Arabia, Yemen. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Now, there are certain things that we need to unlearn. I'm just connecting history to scripture so that you can understand. Now, these things now in the Bible, when we read the Bible, we must be very contextual and we must be able to contextualize things so that uh, we go beyond some of the colonial uh, uh, you know, uh, interpretations and the distortions that were smuggled in, and we've got to sometimes cleanse ourselves of that garbage and then move on to what God in the beginning intended things to be. So when you look at uh, Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah is, is dealing with so many things in his letter. He is dealing with the uh, preempting, he is preempting uh, colonization. He is preempting, uh, 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 you know, the, the 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 default culture that he, you know is is being smuggled or potentially it gets smuggled into these people. And he is debunking and he is doing what you may call sanctions busting. He is doing lockdown busting. He is doing, uh, uh, you know, invasion and. And, 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 and busting of, of, of captivity. He is breaking uh, chains right here. You see, there, there are certain chains that must be broken across Africa and uh, the landscape of African people, uh, you know, regardless of color. Because what you find today is that even if you are you know, white in your skin, even if you are pink, even if you are yellow in your skin, it, the, it, as long as your passport speaks of some kind of African connection or origins, you, you, the, 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 there is a tendency of, of you know, uh, invasion of privacy and, uh, and, and the subjugation and the enslavement that begins to follow you. But in the beginning, it was not so. So the, uh, Jeremiah is is coming out of the spirit of captivity. Remember Jeremiah, when God called him and ordained him and announced this calling, remember Jeremiah was told that uh, I've put my words in your mouth. I've put my words in your mouth. Jeremiah 1 uh, verse, you know, uh, the ninth verse, I've put my words in your mouth. Uh, and uh, by my word, I have set you over nations. I've set you over kingdoms, which means you are not going to be drowned. You are not going to be just a number. You are not going to be just a statistic and just a figure in the midst of nations. You are not going to just uh, drown and, liquid, and get liquidated under the culture of uh, nations or the culture that was smuggled into countries. You are not going to be that. But my word sets you over, over, over you are you are over you are above those things none of those things none of that colonization none of that slavery and enslavement uh, none of it uh, defeats you none of it breaks you. Uh, you, you you are beyond colonization you are beyond racism you are beyond you know racial victimization it's next to impossible for you to be permanently a victim you you you, you break the yokes it's it's not possible for sin and iniquity trespasses and transgression to invade your divinity and then saturate you with 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 uh, abomination and apostasy and, and defilement and then you perish you, you 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 will be able when they drown you when they capsize you you will emerge above because you are uh, completely, completely amphibian. You, you, you have a DNA that can survive uh, if they drown you. You also have a DNA that can also survive if you submerge, if you are also above and on top of the water. You are on top of the situation because your DNA that does not come from 
what comes from outside coming, trying to come into you. Your DNA is inside of you and it then dictates and imposes itself on everything outside of you. These are things that are inside of you. So Jeremiah is writing this letter. Um, he is telling people where they are at, but at the same time, he is breaking the, the bondages. He is breaking the limitations and he, and, he, and he is releasing a letter that has got words. Now, this is why gentlemen and ladies, it's not just about going back to open the church building and the same pulpit, then we look for sweepers and cleaners to clean the, the physical debt uh, from the church building. And then we start to sing the, the same old songs with the, with the same old limited understanding, but it must be a total overhaul and, and, and a total unveiling and a total recovery and reconstruction of the original DNA and of the original intent. So this is why you find when uh, the, 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 the prophet Obadiah is writing from the original inspiration, the inspiration is that you see what on Mount Zion, if you are part of this, the, 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 then your destiny, if you are a nation and uh, you are a Mount Zion nation, you are a nation uh, which has allowed itself that the God, creator of heaven, be your God. You shall, there shall be deliverance in your midst. Um, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So the, this does not change. This cannot be changed by a colonial project. This cannot be changed by an imperial project. This cannot be changed by a socialist or communist project. This thing is, is, is just, it's just in your D, DNA, uh, Mount Zion, this DNA, there shall be deliverance. This is a DNA, the DNA of God, the DNA of the city of God, the DNA of the spirits of just men made perfect the DNA of the mediator of a better covenant, the DNA of the church of the firstborn. Now, this is the DNA that we are bringing to Africa. This is the DNA that Africa needs to rise from, from, from the symmetry and from the, the dungeon and from prison houses. We need this Mount Zion DNA whereby there shall be deliverance. There shall be a breaking of chains. There shall be no permanent enslavement. The DNA of Mount Zion, when it was in Paul and Silas at Philippi, uh, in prison, the DNA itself means there shall be deliverance. That's why deliverance manifested, deliverance emerged. The deliverer did not come from uh, you know, outside. The man was not uh, you know, uh, released from outside. He was released from inside. Paul was released from inside. The, the shaking, the, the, the breaking of the chains took place from inside. Uh, Silas found himself free because deliverers shall emerge in the in the in the in the in the in the prison cell deliverance shall emerge even uh, when you are surrounded by the philistines you innovators shall emerge inventors shall emerge entrepreneurs shall emerge even when you are surrounded by global economic conspiracies and captivity projects and programs, the deliverers and deliverance will just simply emerge, right? This is why right there we are then told in Jeremiah 29, because these things are very, very connected. Jeremiah 29, he is writing to these people and the categories of these people, as we read last time, he is writing to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive. So, we, you know, you can have a situation where elders or are, 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 are in captivity, right? Elders of countries, elders of communities, elders of churches uh, are in captivity uh, and, and the priests in captivity, the prophets in captivity and all the people in, in captivity, uh, they have been carried away. Jeconiah the king, the queen mother in captivity, the eunuchs in captivity, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem in captivity, the craftsmen, the professionals, the blue collar workers, 
So this is why many of these, they can't create industries, they can't create factories, they can't create sustainability and sustainable projects. Uh, they can only create these things uh, under some master somewhere. They, they, can't, they can't give birth to employment. They only have to look for employment. They only have to toy toy looking for jobs. They can't produce the jobs because it's a system. It's apartheid. It's discrimination. It, 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 you know, they, 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 were, they were just stuck and dumped into this thing. So their, their potential craftsmen are, are captured and their is, is potential traders are captured and they don't know how to trade. And they are muted. They don't know how to trade. They, they, they were never taught. They, they never heard that there's something called the trade, uh, you know, especially among the Christian people or among the people of Africa. They, they, they don't know about it. They, they only know when now they the, 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 the trade is being initiated from a world trade organization, when it's being initiated from the colonial headquarters, that's where now they'll line up and they'll comply. They can't trade among themselves. They can't intra-trade. They can't, they, but they collaborate with the looting and plunder and, and, and uh, extortionist projects. Yeah, so that's where they know how to work there. They, 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 they know how to work in slave yards. They don't know how to work in palaces and, uh, and, and how to produce palaces. Now, but Jeremiah is writing now a letter and he is sending a letter. Uh, so this is why this reconstruction, the, the, word, the word must go ahead. The word and the letters and the, and the curriculum and the, the, the parameters of what must happen has got to go out first. So Jeremiah is doing now busting of captivity. He is breaking captivity. He is breaking uh, 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 you see bondage in advance. He is uh, infiltrating Babylon itself and he is beginning to bring the letters of God and the words of God. Now, the, now this is why it's very critical at this point in, in, in the domain and the sphere of church reconstruction. It, it must be reconstruction. It, it, you know, the, the, the word must be able to be the word that can literally raise nations, literally direct and show people how to turn around uh, you know, unemployment and the squalor and filth into glory. Uh, Jeremiah begins to, be, be, you know, bang right in inside of, I mean, the boom here has arrived, the letter has arrived, uh, the, and, and, uh, and the light is now, is now entering into, right into Babylon there, and he begins to speak to these people he begins to tell them how to uh, arise and begin to create an economy, create infrastructure, uh, whereas they brought you here uh, as captives and as slaves, but yourself now, you must turn that whole thing into infrastructure development, into civilization, and bring the civilization that is within you, build houses, dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit and uh, you know uh, is take care of nutrition and diet and health and take wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and 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 daughters you know build the civilization start to build kingdom civilization in places of former captivity in places that were formerly colonies, there must now be kingdom civilization. So when now the word comes, the word from the church must bring civilization to communities. It must bring civilization, not just to church members. Church members are just the starting point as the core, but church members have to go here. They must now go now, therefore, and make disciples of nations and uh, uh, teaching them to observe the DNA that God has commanded us. And, and so these letters are, 
are, are doing outreach and these letters are now bringing now a, a dominion because on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and uh, deliverers and saviors shall emerge. The, these people are going to manifest now. Some manifestation is going to happen uh, out of these former slaves and captives uh, that you may be increased there and not diminished, uh, which means there must be even strategic planning of demography and population, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, the future of populations and so forth, and they seek the peace, seek the uh, shalom, seek the kingdom restoration and alignment of the city where you are, become custodians. Uh, yes, take over, take over. That's what Jeremiah is simply saying. He's saying take over and become custodians there. Uh, okay, if they keep you in Jerusalem, it's fine you are still having dominion, you still reach out. But if they happen to take you into this strange quagmire and the strange locations, uh, thanks be to God, still take over there and cause Mount Zion culture and the civilization of the kingdom to come into that place. And then he begins to say now, eh, 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 you see, do not sit there. I, I, I like uh, the, 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 the middle of... Uh, the, the eighth verse is that says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. Uh, for they prophesy falsely to you in my name, and I have not sent them, says the Lord. Now, there were folks, there were guys that were busy trying to tell people to say, no, you, you don't have to worry. Uh, our, you know, our future, you know, is in heaven, and it will be well in heaven. But here we are stuck, guys. Uh, and then they were starting songs that are just uh, completely uh, without dominion, and 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 uh, and and, the, and and the, and the hopelessness was was becoming a doctrine and a theology, and and they were being told that you know it 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 shall be well, it shall be well only only and only if we go back to our old temple only and only, and then they were encouraging one another and saying next week, yeah, we might be pardoned and there might be clemency and we might go back to Jerusalem and so forth. So they were trying to introduce a doctrine of present day uselessness, a, a doctrine of present day dysfunctionality, a doctrine of postponement of the kingdom and a doctrine of uh, uh, non-essentialness to say we, we are hopeless, we are we don't know what to do here. We can only know what to do when we go back to the four walls of the temple in Jerusalem. So this is why at most you find most of the church does not know what to do when the, the four walls are shut down. They don't know what to do when the, the doors of the four walled building are shut. They don't know what to do when they are now in the marketplaces. They don't know what to do when you remove them from familiar territory. But Jeremiah is doing busting of that, uh, you know, uh, backwardness and busting of that, uh, uh, you know, uh, drought of, of, of wisdom and drought of knowledge. He is breaking that system from the people of Zion, from the people of God. And he is now saying to you, you need to have a dominion mentality. A dominion uh, mentality is a DNA within you. Ma deliverance shall come. Uh, deliverance and so start manifesting even when you are there. For I know the thoughts, where I know the thoughts that I have, I know the plans that God says, I know the plans, I know the DNA that I put in you. In the beginning, it was not so. In the beginning, you see, the kingdom is within you. Uh, chains cannot remove the kingdom from within you. Uh, uh, starvation cannot remove the kingdom DNA within you. In the beginning, I there is a blueprint that I set for you. My plans for you are for peace, thoughts of shalom, thoughts of dominion, thoughts of deliverance at any time, thoughts of deliverance. That's why when they surrounded uh, Samson in Gaza, at midnight, they were waiting for daybreak. The, the, the people, the Philistines of Gaza, they were waiting for daybreak so that they can capture him under some light. 
they did not know that the DNA in him, as long as this portion of his DNA is still him, at midnight, this guy will arise at midnight when nobody thinks, when nobody suspects, and when nobody supposes. This guy is going to emerge. This guy is going to have dominion at midnight. So this is time now. This is now why we can't just wait for things to clear off or things to become normal. No, the, 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 new, the new normal, the, the victory, the, the, the desired future has to be within us. So Samson rose up at midnight. At midnight, just like uh, you know, um, Abraham and the, the 318 trained in his own household, at midnight, at midnight, he arranged detachments and he prepared reconstruction and deliverance. And the deliverers emerged out of Abraham's household. Saviors emerged out of Abraham's household. And he was able to release programs and initiatives from Abraham's household programs that can rescue you know rescue kingdoms and rescue civilizations and rescue territories this is the dna of god's church the father of faith is abraham let's look at that rock where we were hewn according to isaiah 51 speaks of that it says look unto abraham your father look unto sarah your mother look unto the rock from which you were hewn i called him alone and I put a DNA into him and I blessed him and the Lord shall come for Zion. So this is who we are. And so we, when, if you are a pastor, if you are a bishop, if you are a prophet, if you are a teacher of the word, if you are a priest of God, if you are, if you are an, a child of God saturated with the royal priesthood, when you open your mouth right there, you must know that you are busting, you are breaking fake civilizations, fake mentalities, fake uh, 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 mindsets that were, uh, uh, you know, hacked and, and uh, infiltrated into our system. And, and you are building kingdom civilization. You are building the, the civilization of Zion where there shall be deliverance. And God has called us unto this as a DNA. Then he says, the, the plans that I have for you, they are for, they are for peace, they are for shalom, they are for dominion, and they are for reconstruction, they are for resurrection, they are for glorification. These are plans for the kingdom and not plans of evil. These plans, they work whether, whether they throw you into the, 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 the palace of, of the Chaldeans, you will reign, you will reign. And whether they throw you overseas, you will still reign. Whether they throw you into the Egyptian jail, you will reign. Uh, to give you a future and a hope. Africa needs hope. Africa needs a future. Uh, the, the church, the, 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 the faith or uh, under God, uh, people need to know that there is hope. The glory of this latter house shall actually be greater than that of the former. And in this place, the Lord will give peace. He will give shalom. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. So there are times when God cannot listen, cannot, uh, cannot listen to some of the uh, 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 defeated prayers because he doesn't understand where you are getting that misinformation and disinformation from so he can't answer you because it's just wrong it's just a misaligned it's just distorted it's a distorted distortion then he, but when now you are praying from this perspective where you know um, the plans of god the blueprints of god are within us you will call upon god and you go and pray to god and he will listen to you and uh, you will seek him and he will uh, be found of us and when we search for him um, with all our hearts. So this is where uh, we are operating at and this is where we are. Uh, we must make sure that there is a return and there is, uh, uh, we're not doing experiments here. We are doing things that God in the beginning uh, embedded, you know, he, he, 
you know, he, he laid these things in the foundations of our existence. He knew that at some point you will meet evil. That's why prayer says, deliver us from evil. But this morning, I just want to thank God. I just want to thank God as uh, we unmute ourselves and begin to partake of this culture. As we wake up today and as you rise up today and his, or as you go to, re to rest and to bed in your bed chamber, wherever you are, depending with your time zone we are now coming to the culture or uh, uh, completely the culture of zion and uh, this culture works regardless of where it is and where we are on mount zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness which means the the sanctification separation unto god whether we we were left damned in prison or we're outside they shall we are still sanctified we are still set apart for god and we possess our possessions. We have dominion. We are deliverers. And these things, we must speak them to ourselves and speak them to one another. And we will judge over evil, we will judge over fleshly territories. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. The kingdom shall be the Lord's. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. The kingdom shall be the Lord's. We have an unfair advantage because we have access to information. We have access to the future. We have access to the end of the matter and the end of all these things. The kingdom shall be the Lord's. So we are not just a people of the past. We are a people of now and a people of eternity. We are a people also of the future. So we need to think and operate from that perspective. And from that perspective also, it then calls upon us to say, okay, if we are deliverers, if we are emerging as deliverers, as saviors, and as builders and designers of the civilization of the future, the civilization of eternity, it means what platform must we have? What kind of clusters must we have? What kind of operations must we have? What types of reconstruction? What should be the measure and span of this thing? What sermons must we preach? What kind of songs must we sing? What kind of youth must we produce? What kind of grooming must we give to our men and to our boys and to our girls and to our women? What kind, because the whole world all creation is waiting for our manifestation. So that is where now we are building and God has set us apart for these 70 days so that we can connect to the ways of God and move away and begin to break this spirit of these limitations in Jesus' name. Can we unmute ourselves this morning as, as I hand over back to uh, Pastor Narazzo to round off and dismiss us, but let's unmute ourselves and begin to proclaim and begin to absorb and begin to by the word of our testimony overcome every limitation. God will bless you. Thank you this morning, Lord, in the Thank name you, of Father. Jesus, because on Mount Zion, there in shall the be deliverance. There the shall be deliverance on Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance on Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance on Mount Zion. Yes, my Father, we thank you in particular. This is our calling. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you this morning. Because on Mount Zion, they have been being stranded. We release some being hard. We will release the whole household of God from being tough and dumb and kept Lord. Thank you, Father. This is our destiny. This is where we go. This is where we belong. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your name right away because we are. Deliverance. There, there, there is holiness in Jesus' name. Yes, we are set apart for God. We are victorious in Christ. 
over to you pastor narazo god bless Thank you, Apostle. Thank you for that powerful word. Uh, as we as we come to the close, I just want us to, to 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 think this way and to be expectant to say, as 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 the word was being released, we are the deliverers. And let's not think of the deliverer tomorrow, but today, because while God is working and building us uh, to come to that perfect man. He is also working in us and also sending us to do the deliverance. So let's be expected today to say, God is going to bring you into a situation where you become the deliverer. Will you step up the, to the plate and be the deliverer? Because the, 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 the kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within me. And we are being are called upon to step up and to step in and begin to provide the solution. We will be brought before the kings and the queens and the, 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 the way we, we will be called is to bring in the solution. So let's, let's, as we leave this prayer platform, let's live with that expectation to say, I will be brought into a situation where I need to be the deliverer. Will we allow God, will we allow Jesus to manifest himself in and through us? Or will we hold him back because we think, okay, I'm not ready for this, but we are ready. Today, I'm sure tomorrow we'll come up with testimonies to say that I was brought into a place where I was called upon to be a deliverer and I brought deliverance. In whatever area God would, br would bring us, let's go with that expectation and be expected of that to say, today I will bring, I'll be a solution provider. Today I will be able to give an answer to a question. I'll be able to release life to a person, to an individual, to a situation, but I will be a deliverer today. So let's go with that expectation. We want to thank you, Wendy, we will meet you tomorrow. Um, I'll just ask you, the Bishop Felicia, just to close for us. But let's go with it, that expect, expectation that today we are delivering. Over to you, Bishop. Thank you so much, Pastor Nyarazo. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the weight that we have received this morning. We thank you, Lord, that from now on, by this weight that we have received, we are now the deliverers. We are leaving this platform, Heavenly Father, expected of many, many, many opportunities that will appear before us for us to begin to execute the deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for your servant to whom you have spoken. And thank you for all your servants that we gather today as we are leaving this platform. We give glory unto you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We meet at 5 a.m. Central and African time. Central African time. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, leaders. We are released. Amen. Amen. Amen.